Good morning, chickens. Congratulations, you're learning to throw on the potter's wheel. You're gonna need to get yourself some clay. And for starting out, don't start with a huge piece of clay. You're gonna wanna weigh out about a pound to a pound and a half of clay and really master these smaller scale sizes before you go big. First things first, we're gonna be wedging and we're using the monkey face technique where we're rolling and compressing the clay into a spiral. So it's a push, roll back, push, roll back, push, roll back, push, roll back. Takes practice, you'll get the hang of it, but as you're wedging, you're gonna be rolling towards your body and you should start to see this cute little monkey face or ram's head, sometimes it's called, up here. This particular demo is for right-handed throwers. Your switch should be down and your wheel should be turning to the left. First things first, sticking that ball of clay onto a dry wheel. Pat it into a nice ball, take a tiny little drop of water, not too much water or else it won't stick, it'll slide all over. But you do need a little something there to create some suction in order to stick your clay onto the wheel. Centering your clay is critical to being a successful thrower on the potter's wheel. Coning up is a technique where you apply even and equal pressure to opposite sides of the clay, making it center in the middle of the potter's wheel into a cone shape. I like to tell my right-handed throwers, think of your left hand as your stability hand. Keeping that left hand still and stable is gonna maintain the clay in a still stable state. Say that three times fast. And then your right hand is going to be your shaping hand. That's the one that's gonna be doing most of the work. Apply gentle pressure with your palms and find that stillness in the center of the wheel. Next, our goal is going to be compressing this cone down into a centered ball of clay. Using your right palm, you're going to apply pressure on the top as well as the side. Use your left palm to hold the whole piece stable and center. And think gentle, equal pressure compressing the piece into a small, low ball. You're gonna need to repeat this coning and compressing multiple times until your clay is perfectly centered. This time when I cone the piece, I'm gonna use the push and pull method where I push from in front of my body and pull in from across the wheel. Some people prefer this coning technique. As you're centering your clay, you'll see it start to spiral onto itself until it looks as though it's spinning, but not moving, not bouncing around or doing the hula. I like to shape the clay into a low, small ball or almost like a small birthday cake rounded shape before I open it. Congratulations, you centered your clay. Now we need to open on center as well. I like to use my left hand for stability as I use my dominant finger to open straight down the center. Sweeping the floor or widening is another step where students often throw their clay off center. So it's really key that as you drag your finger across the bottom, 
you move very slowly, slower than the speed of your wheel. Now it's time to start throwing this into a cylinder. You're gonna be working on the right side of your wheel, putting your left fingertips inside and your right hand is gonna be on the outside of the cylinder at all times. Your wheel should be turning left so the clay flows through your fingertips. Imagine in your mind a spinning pinch pot. So you're going to set gentle pressure between your fingertips on your left hand and gently move up the wall of the clay. Using the sponge to help keep your thumb still and stable as well as applying some water. You need it to slide gently. What we're trying to do here is create a even wall that goes from the bottom to the top. So we don't want to have any thick and thin spots in this baseline wall. Once you get the first pull in, you can apply slightly more pressure and then move up the wall. In order to grow your cylinder taller, you're gonna to need to create this S pull. This is where you're gonna take your inside fingers and outside fingers working together in unison, but the inside fingers are gonna push into the wall of the clay, creating a little bulge. Then the outside fingers are gonna follow underneath that little bulge, growing the cylinder taller. This is tricky stuff. It's important to always keep your fingers and your clay moist with water so that your fingers can slide and not create drag or stickiness. But as you'll find, it's a delicate balance. You don't want to use too much water and create really wet, sloppy clay. Just keep your hands clean and wet. The clay should always be spinning when you touch your piece on the wheel and your hands should always move slower than the speed of the wheel in order to create those tight throwing lines. All right, it's time to take a look inside this thing. Cut underneath your pot with the wire tool and then slice them in half to take a look inside. We're looking for a consistent, smooth bottom and even balanced walls in our perfect little cylinders. A plus. To clean off the wheel, you can use a scraper to scrape off any clay or a big yellow sponge or a combination of both. Then you're ready to go for the next piece. When you're finished with your wheel, clean your splash pans and the table, turn off the wheel, push the button so it's no longer illuminated, and pick up the pedal off the floor, as well as the stool. The wheel will be turned off when the light is off. 